so let's talk about interpretable multi-hop reasoning, because we don't want to imitate and just memorize and just copy. Uh, in order to answer the question, you see many people create billions of uh, neural networks with billions of parameters. For example, in transformer architecture, transformer architecture has n squared in computational complexity, and so it's not it's not uh, scalable. But people in OpenAI use it uh, a lot, and um, they say they they create something, but it is it may not be interpretable. That's why these models like BERT and GPT they have lots of problems that um, that um, there are very elementary problems. Just because we are just memorizing, imitating it without interpretation, without explanation, and this is what NLP communities is suffering from because we want to finally discover new ways so that we understand that we have understood. For example, in, um, I will explain some of the uh, interpretable approaches to multi-hop reasoning. The idea of open domain, as I said in the previous lecture, is that we have lots of documents. And most of the time, you don't even have a knowledge graph. So you should have information uh, extraction pipelines, for example, coreference resolution, named entity recognition. And you, have, you create a complex pipeline in order to just create a knowledge graph, knowledge graph, which is so, it is so expensive. But sometimes you just say, okay, our, our source is just text. We don't even need the knowledge graph. We can embed sentences. We can use discourse parsing. We can use, uh, we can use dependency parsing, semantic parsing. We don't need those uh, knowledge graphs. And this is another methodology. That is a different approach, which is, I think, could be, could be more scalable. Of course, you could have knowledge graph for some entities and you can you can have text so we can your source could be a combination of them in order to answer a question so in open domain that you have lots of documents you you need the, it's not just one piece of evidence you have lots of evidences then you have two modules document retrieval first you retrieve what is related what is relevant and then after focusing, for example, you have found a bunch of evidences. And then you focus on one of them. And this is the goal of reader, that you focus on just one of them and answer the question. And of course, you, as I said, you could have a choreography. I mean, switching between different evidences, uh, like a Markov chain, and then answer the question. And as I said, there are three types of dense retriever because you have a question, you have a document, and the way that they are interconnected to create a score could be a different. It could be like this very interconnected or different architectures. Our PullNet is a very great article for open domain. And uh, I think I will explain it in another lecture. But, but the idea is very simple. We rank, rank of relation question per. Because we have a question, you have embedded your question with any kind of sequence to sequence model, such as LSTM. And now you have your question and relation, and you find if, if this question and relation have highest score. Another article that I want to explain today is a step towards interpretable multi-hop reasoning, bridge phrase identification and query expansion.
So we, so this is Steiner tree based. You know, Steiner tree is my favorite subject in computer science. And, you know, approximation algorithm is really interesting. You use linear programming and many those things uh, that uh, you can use to solve very NP hard problems, at least to approximate. Of course, there are many of problems in graph theory is NP hard, but we approximate it. And uh, so this algorithm uses a Steiner tree. And uh, in multi-hop question example from Hotpot QA, it is necessary to first find the film that has a score composed by Jerry Goldschmidt. So there are two supporting documents. First, uh, we find this Jerry Goldschmidt, and then so you have a um, you have a bridge phrases. First, you should know the alien, and then because of alien, you find this and you focus on that piece of evidence that is the work of a reader, and then you answer the question. The answer is Ronald. So the interpretable multi-hop reasoning in this algorithm step is that given a question in the context, first the graph we construct a graph of noun phrases from the question. And then we apply Steiner tree. So so you have some Steiner trees, uh, some, some nodes, some terminals. And then you create some, these are Steiner points, that using these, you can connect all of these nodes together. So the aim of these Steiner points is to connect, find a path that creates a uh, single component of the graph that is connected. And after that, we create bridge phrases like alien. Uh, so these bridge phrases allows us to expand the query. And it helps in increasing the relevance of evidence. So in Steiner tree, we have a graph. We have weights and set of terminals. And a network connecting all terminals. Uh, uh, so we minimize the cost of network built. An optimal network will be a tree. This is a typical Steiner tree. So the input is given a question and a set of documents, supporting documents, we want to answer. First, as I said, the first step is noun phase extraction. And then we do normalization in those elementary, elementary jobs. And in noun phase construction, we have different uh, things. For example, it could be title sentence, it could be title title, or it could be sentence sentence edges, different kinds of edges. For example, here captures co-occurrences between noun phrases mentioned in the same sentence. And the co-reference edges between uh, Inclusion, inclusive phases from the same paragraph. For example, co-reference resolution is one of these steps that you create for the pipeline for information extraction to create a knowledge graph. So it is already, uh, it has already been, it has, it has been done before. And the last step is Steiner tree computation. Because we have piece, different pieces of no different different nodes, we want to know how can they how can we connect these different information. What is the minimum amount of edges that we should connect in order to connect all of these nodes? 
So that's why it is interpretable because we know that uh, how these different things are connected to each other. And then we have the final step is query expansion and retrieval. We expand the question to three men on a horse is a play. So we are expanding the question and then we do graph pruning, question phase identification. So to further evaluate the impact of step on retrieving relevant evidences, we feed the top rank set of sentences into a reader model for answer extraction. 